I'm Mr. B and today we're talking fuses, okay? So fuses are the most simple part of our electrical system. And the good thing is, is they all pretty much work the same. So whether you have a Yugo or a Maybach, a fuse is going to work the same way. A fuse's job is to limit amperage, okay? So the number that you'll see on a fuse uh, and the color code that you'll see on most of our modern fuses that we have are going to correspond to an amperage, okay? So once it crosses that amperage, the fuse will blow or open up and that will open the circuit up and cease any current flow through the circuit. So these are protection devices. In other words, they are to take the sacrificial damage before our wires or connectors or anything uh, start you know, overheating and possibly cause a fire or smoke or uh, component damage, uh, anything like that. So they are normally replaceable and we'll replace these uh, with just standard fuses that we get from anywhere. You can only get all these fuses from your local auto parts store. But let's talk about testing first, okay? So I have seen a lot of master technicians, people like me, even sometimes me, I get hung up because I think too far ahead in the process and I don't do the simple stuff like check fuses. Okay, so I've seen master techs work on cars for days and they can't fix it. I'll, uh, you know, get handed the ticket or something like that and I'll walk over and I fix it within five minutes because the fuse was blown. A lot of times this has to do with the fuse diagram or arrangement on the car might be wrong. It might not be. Uh, presented well in the manual or the service manual. So uh, I always tell everybody, just check all your fuses. If you have electrical problems, especially if you got something really strange going on, just go and quickly, it only takes, I'm gonna show you how to do this real quick. It only takes about five minutes for you to go down and check every fuse in the car using a test light or a multimeter. So uh, you will need a test light, at least for this process. I do recommend you know, a, a multimeter because I want to see battery voltage on both sides of the fuse, but I will show you how to do it with the test light as well. So I've got my new Jetta here and it does have a blown fuse in it, which uh, I'm going to make a separate video on how to fix it. But I'm going to show you the difference between a good fuse and a bad fuse and what you're going to have to do to spot that quickly. Go ahead and replace it and continue on with your diagnosis. Okay, here are my three go-to tools of the trade if I'm running into electrical issues, okay? So just checking fuses, if I'm just going you know, down the line, I may grab a test light, especially if it's an older vehicle. Um, you know, They do make test lights that have the, the uh, voltage readouts on them, which are pretty nice. This is just a standard test light that will uh, light up just an incandescent bulb. I do recommend these over your LED test lights because they are a little bit more reliable. This is your digital volt ohm meter and of course we're gonna have to set to direct voltage and we can just go down the fuse line with this and it's gonna give us a quick reading of battery voltage or not battery voltage. And of course this is our lab scope. Now this is you know a fifteen twenty thousand dollar investment. I don't recommend you jumping out and buying one of these right off the uh, bat. If you're doing a lot of work, then yes, this is definitely going to be uh, my go-to machine. But you can do this exercise <clears throat> with a multimeter, or worst case scenario, grab you a test light. The the important thing is to get these things tested and go ahead and rule out uh, the fuses being the problem. A lot of electrical work and diagnostic is not ruling things in, but ruling things out and working off a process of elimination. So let's go over to the car and I'll show you how uh, at least these two items right here work. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is, I'm gonna show you how to do the test light real quick. I'm going to want to grab a good known ground. I'm gonna turn my work light on here. So the best good known ground that I have is going to be right here on the battery, which is pretty close to the fuse box. And then I just want to test my test light. So I'm just going to touch the battery and it should 
light up there. It's a good strong light. And so testing my fuses, and I'm going to zoom in here on the fuse box. All right, so here are my fuses. These are my encapsulated and uh, fusible links, which I should be able to visibly check and make sure that ring in there is intact. And of course we have our relays. Our relays aren't protection devices, but they do control amperage. So, you know, if you have an issue with your electrical system, you need to maybe swap relays and test and make sure that the relay is working correctly. But what I'm worried about are these multicolored fuses right here. Of course, each color has a uh, amperage. So 30 is green, 5 is orange, 10 is red, yellow is 20. Another common one you see up here is 15. Uh, however, it's not up here, but it's blue. So since I've got my test light plugged in, what the test light does is it all it does is it completes a circuit. Okay, so I'm wanting, I've got my uh, load here, my, my bulb, I have my conductor, I have my ground, now I'm looking for my power, and that's the last thing I need to, to uh, make a circuit. So I'm going to go back and forth looking for power. If you have a fuse like this 30 right here that has no power on each leg, it could be because it's off the... Uh, the circuit is turned off by a switch or it could be that you're on one of the extra fuses or the additional fuses they put in here that that are spares but see like this 10 I have power here and I have power here at the back end of this fuse which is telling me the fuse is good so if I didn't have power on one end then that would be the fuse is blown and it's not connected from this leg to that leg so it can't possibly be working so I'm going down, I'm just checking every one of these. Some of these don't have power to them. A few of these don't. So you may have to turn the car on or the circuit on that you're trying to test before we uh, get into actually making sure that the circuit's getting power. So make sure it's on. So that's really quick how the test light works. Let me show you how the multimeter works. Okay, so using a multimeter, um, I want to take the negative or the COM cable, sometimes it's called COM, and put it right here on the negative post of the battery. And then, just like I did with my test light, I'm going to run these, and I'm looking for battery voltage, which is 12.6 on this. 12.6, 12.6. So if it reads 12.5 or something like that, 12.4, as we're moving along, that's not really that big of a deal. If we see like six volts, two volts, something like that, then of course I know I'm gonna be in for a problem where we have a voltage drop across the fuse. So all these fuses are good. Let me see if I can get down into the uh, floorboard here and see if I can get the fuse that I know that's bad and show y'all how that looks different. Okay, I have this camera down here and I'm trying to show you guys. Let me go ahead and turn the car on. And so the fuse that I'm looking at is this yellow one right here. This is the cigarette lighter fuse or the 12 volt outlet fuse. And when I touch, I got my test light here. When I touch one side, it will light up. And when I touch the other side, it will not light up. So that is a bad fuse. And this goes to the cigarette lighter or the 12 volt outlet. And yeah, so that means we are bad fuse. So not letting power go from one side to the other and that's what's causing the open circuit and I'll let y'all see here which fuse it is it's a big yellow one right here 
Sorry, the camera's having a hard time focusing. It's just really hard to get down in here with this thing. So I have the fuse out, and I just wanted to show y'all kind of a close-up. You'll see a black smudge here, and that's where the fuse has blown. Um, for these cigarette lighter fuses, a lot of times, you know, if you have a charger that's higher amperage or uh, a cheaper charger, you know, not factory authorized charger, it'll blow these. Or a lot of times people will keep change around their cigarette lighter and they'll get a coin stuck in their cigarette lighter. So uh, the, the important thing is not to replace these fuses with anything bigger than a 20 amp. It's a 20 amp for a reason. The wires going to these fuses are not that big. So always put you a 20 amp back in there. Make sure that the cigarette lighter doesn't have any or the 12 volt outlet. You can tell how old I am. I'm calling it a cigarette lighter. The outlet doesn't have anything in it that's causing it to arc. So if you check this and it's not the fuse, you may have a bad cigarette uh, outlet itself or the uh, 519 control module isn't sending power to that. So you just have to dig a little bit deeper in the wiring diagram and find out what's going on. Another way to tell if your fuse is good or bad, if you can't see it, some of these are a little bit darker than others you won't be able to see is to do a resistance test and so this is a good fuse this is the bad fuse so i'm going to put my meter just clamp on one end and clamp the other it doesn't matter which one's which this one is the bad one so you see we don't have any movement with our meter so if i put this on the good fuse I should get near zero. So right there. So that's telling me that this fuse is good and the reading that shows out of line or overload is showing me that this one's bad. So uh, if you have to pull the fuses and check and make sure that they're good, this is a real quick way of doing it as well. Just pull them one by one, test them, put them back in. Uh, I have seen where these will get corroded around the legs and they'll break, but they'll still test good across the top of the fuse. So keep that in mind that this is, you know, this will find 99% of the problems out there, but there's always that 1% that'll, that'll come and, and get you. So, all right, so that does it for us today. The most important thing I want y'all to get out of this video is if you have a electrical problem, test all your fuses, okay? All of them, every one of them. Just run down the line with your meter or your test light and make sure that you have power on both legs okay so this is a lot of electrical problems are just blown fuses the fuses get a little weak uh, you know may just pop you may have a voltage surge or something on that circuit so always check your fuses and then you can start you know downloading the wiring diagrams and everything else and, and getting into the deeper diagnostics but don't let a guy like me come behind you and fix your car because you have a blown fuse somewhere, okay? So if you learned something, like this video, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get more of my electrical stuff out there this week, so there's gonna be uh, more and more videos coming that are electrical in nature. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, I'm on VK, and I'm trying to hit any other uh, forum that I can to get my information out there. Uh, if you have any questions about this video, uh, just hit me up in the comments. I'm more than uh, more than happy to help you out in the comments. And if you have any ideas for videos, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do.